So which tree is the best? Hi, Blue here, it's Isrin here with a bit of a different video about the Atlas passives. There's obviously a lot of videos going around, everybody saying that they have the best uh, Atlas passive tree when I don't think there is. Notice I did not say that. Um, I don't think there is a the best passive tree at all. Uh, and I wanted to just make a video explaining the nodes, talking a little bit about why they're strong because there's so many different strong trees. And a lot of people, like, even if it's not necessarily the strongest, maybe some people will just really enjoy a certain playstyle. Like, maybe they just really enjoy Bestiary or Abyss. So I just want to explain a little bit about the nodes and point out which ones are stronger of each node. So probably a bit of a just longer explanation video. I do have a separate one for, like, what kind of trees I prefer uh, and would recommend. But uh, this one's just, we're going to talk about the different nodes. And I found a really, really nice uh, picture posted on Reddit by the user Antham TV, which has like a really nice overview. Like you can see here, it's just highlighted where each region is. So it's easier to find than on the actual like search feature on the Path of Excel one. So the problem with some of the nodes is that some are, you know, not super close to each other. And also another thing very worth mentioning, we uh, are maybe going to have big map sustain issues. So pretty much everybody is going to take a lot of the map specific ones. But obviously we see here in the middle, this is what I'm rushing, an additional Kyrick mission a day. Keep map poverty away. Obviously very, very big. And uh, especially if you're not playing a lot per day, it'll be a very big difference. But uh, yeah, I'm rushing that. And then uh, scouting reports, this is for re-rolling both maps here excels. So very, very strong as well. And then we have some like really, really strong nodes here for mapping. 15% chance to be one tier higher. Now, do you remember this does not let you get tier 17 plus maps. It just says if a map's about to drop a tier 12 and the map has the legality of doing so, like it can, uh, it can drop one tier higher. And there's a few of those um, here on the tree. This one too. I'm not a huge fan of this one. Could use it if you're trading. But all those four map nodes will be really, really good. Uh, early on, and I think a lot of people are going to be rushing those. But let's look a little bit about the others. So, for example, let's look at Blight, right? On the Blight nodes, this one, really, really good, especially on Trade League. Honestly, it's good on Soul Soft one too, because you're going to be dropping Anointed Jewelry, and that means you could drop some really rare stuff, like maybe something, let's say, triple gold or double gold. And then the oil extractor has a chance to like remove the oil and give you a gold oil or a silver oil or something you really need. So, obviously, this is really good. Uh, in Trade League, it depends on the prices. Like, if people aren't doing Blight that much, then yeah, they can be very, very expensive. I feel like prices do go down pretty quickly there. But in Solo Cell Fun, you can very easily end up not having the oils you need. Immune Response, good when you have a strong enough build. So you don't want to wait for the Blight to, like, shit out all the monsters. Uh, this one, obviously, just makes it a total 28% chance plus a few, so 31. Uh, 30, 32% chance to be a blight map per map, which, you know, that'll really add up. And then here, that when you actually are getting the chest, you'll have a bigger chance to get a actual blight map. So those those are, like, particularly good. Uh, probably better than these, really. I mean, especially because immune response, early on, you're not going to have a build good enough to deal with that. This one, I'm not a big fan. That would be, like, the easiest blight one to skip, in my opinion. Its areas contain a blight encounter. Uh, and it's only 3% of 3% of all the maps you find. So you will find quite a lot. But uh, I, I would not waste this many points on it. And uh, the travel nodes are variety is lucky, which is good for sure. Uh, blight encounters contain up to one additional boss. And oils are found 25% chance to be found at a tier higher. If you were about to find a silver oil, you will find a gold oil. Now, if you're in like a tier 11 map and a gold oil can't drop, it probably won't bypass the drop restriction. So that's like the blight nodes. They're they're okay. I feel like these are like the best one. Beyond Beyond has some really good nodes, and a lot of new players might be wondering like why are these like boomer gamers talking so much about Beyond? And it's sort of part of the whole the more you juice you invest into the map, like the more like sextants, scarabs, everything like that you put on the map, the more everything like buffs each other. Uh, and Beyond is a very big part of that because obviously. Say you're adding like four sextants, four scarabs to the map. So now you have a shit ton extra density, right? Instead of 600 monsters on the map, you might have 4,500 monsters on the map. And then 
when you on top of that have beyond with a higher percent chance to spawn and you take the increased effect of map modifiers so maybe you have like a fairly high percentage chance for beyond to appear you have that there's uh, require a few portals and increase merging radius. Now suddenly you're spawning 20 to 30 beyond bosses per map and a load, load of rares. So this will really, really add up. It's really good XP unless you're dying repeatedly to it, then it's bad. But really good XP and really good currency. So honestly, all the beyond nodes are super great. Like, and we have beyond on the map device now, which stacks with the roll on a map. So we're going to see a lot of people doing that. So for the beyond one, all of them are good. For the ritual ones, I'm a huge fan of ritual. I think it's very strong. There's obviously very strong items in there like Blizzard Crown, etc. For, for lots of builds. And Blizzard Crown kind of getting buffed this day because our damage effectiveness has gone up by a lot. Very, very strong. But we can talk about the different uh, ritual nodes. We have always four here. That's like kind of mandatory. And the travel nodes are a percentage uh, chance for it to spawn. And the default is 8% spawn rate. And this one is roll favor two additional times. So these are pretty much mandatory. Um, I really do like this for solo cell phone, especially. And uh, the reason for that is you don't always, especially if you're getting repeatedly good drops, you don't have that much of a chance to buy the like ritual splinters. And these come pre-filled. So it saves you a little bit of time. Obviously, time is worth a lot when you're uh, doing everything yourself. And the blood fiddle vessels, they will guarantee ritual on a map and they will also like they'll juice, they'll juice your ritual. So you can get 30 to 40,000 uh, ritual juice and then you're rerolling several times and you, you're getting really good currency. You're getting influence items, incursion items, which they're pretty strong this league because of the new influence types. This I don't like. I don't think I would ever take this. I would maybe take this if I'm down here, but I just think the tree is so tight. I would probably never take this ritual node. Essences. Um, sadly, we do not have essences on the map device, but I do feel like they've sort of kept that in mind when making this. So there are four essence nodes, and honestly, they are all pretty strong. The uh, first one here that you can get instantaneously, um, I don't rate the travel nodes very much, but the area contains an essence. That's really, really good. And I'm not 100% sure how it's going to work, but you might notice while playing Path of Exile, that very often that when you're mapping, you will just... You'll never encounter one ghost or one essence normally. So maybe this will also increase the chance that you're getting three or four essences per map. Um, because very often when you... Maybe it's only when it spawns naturally, but you'll very often find multiple of League Mechanic when it actually does spawn. Like very often I'll find three or four ghosts, not just one. But there are other ones that help alleviate that problem regardless of what is the case here. Imprisoned monsters have a 15% chance uh, to spawn three additional essences. And the travel ones are 5% chance each to have an additional essence. So even if you only find one, it'll have a bunch extra. Then up here, we have monsters imprisoned by shrieking essence will be duplicated when released. And that corrupting cannot release them. So you can remnant and it won't like insta unleash on you. Here, chance for remnant of corruption, very big, especially for soul self where you can't buy them. Honestly, even all the travel nodes here are decent because you can have an additional essence. Um, and here, one of the most important ones, if not the most important, essences found in area are a higher tier. That means that you can find a shrieking essence. And uh, obviously, these two combine very, very nicely. So it will say that the monster is duplicated. They do have some bad nodes, right? Like the harvest XP one. Like, for example, here, harvest plants in areas have a 50% chance to spawn an additional monster. That is just for XP. This doesn't give you additional craft. So... I would be a little surprised, but not. It wouldn't. It wouldn't blow me away if um, they literally just. It's just an extra monster to kill, but hopefully it will give you the actual essences too. But it's TGD. You never really know because this exists. So again, all the essences very very strong, uh, especially for Soul Salfan. I'm not a hundred percent sure how good it is for Trade League. I don't know how much you guys sell Deafening Essence for it and stuff like that, and Delirium Essence and Sanity and stuff. Obviously, early league it's huge. Um, but pretty much for the entire SSF League, I can't see myself dropping essences. Next up, we have Metamorph. Now, this is kind of too scary for me on Hardcore because I don't want a random ass Metamorph in my map. I don't really rate the percentage chance to spawn down here very much. Um, assemble Metamorph after it's dead, I've heard is pretty bad. Now, this is probably decent, an additional sample, especially if you are like trying to go for like Metamorph Unique. 
and you want like a lot of catalysts and stuff. But this one, especially for softcore, is kind of nice. It spawns a rogue metamorph and it's at like 38% chance or something. So you'll be mapping and there'll be a pretty good chance that there just is a metamorph. And if you have a solid build, you'll just be killing a metamorph and getting a bunch of rewards. So it's like a little like Farvocious Treasure Goblin. There are nodes up here too. 30% uh, chance, or actually it's more like 40% chance for rewards to be doubled is really good. I wouldn't recommend this, especially for newer players. They're just going to get fucking leveled by a really strong metamorph because it's going to be so hard to kill with 150% more life. Next up, we have Bestiary. Always kind of underrated, in my opinion. And um, there are a few really, really strong things. Obviously, we showcased with Steel Mage a few leagues ago, making thousands and thousands of um, uh, chaos in a few hours. I think we made like three or six thousand chaos each in two hours or something. It was just, it was a stupid amount of excel. And that's because in a six man group, everybody gets the beast. And then when everybody gets the beast portal, then you have six beast portals each. So that's thirty six total crafts. Um, so that's insanely, insanely nice. Very, very many of the crafts, like the spider craft, the crab craft. Obviously, the price depends on how many people are doing it. But we'll talk about all the best hearing notes. This one, insane, dude. There's nothing more I want than Einar carrying my shitty build. So I would never take that build. And this one's okay. Like 15% chance to be replaced with Red Beast. Like, it's not bad. I think that's probably only worth taking if you are taking Great Migration. So that, yeah, you, you just get a bunch of Red Beasts when both of those proc. Now, honestly, I do not see myself ever taking Big Game and Great Migration. It's just so many strong things on the Atlas already. However, I do see myself specking into Natural Selection and then also maybe the Hunt for Phenomus and the Hunt for Krakian to get more Imprint Beasts, Split Beasts, and Spider Beasts. Um, maybe Softcore people will take Feral. I don't know if the normal Feral is as expensive or it's just Replica. But um, the less common thing is really good. And then what I would normally do is I would say I have 30, 20, and 20 best area missions, like a total of 50, 60, I would run all my best area missions and then spec out of it and put in something else. But uh, these these are actually pretty good. Incursion. Now, there are some really strong incursion nodes, namely these. And incursion, this thing is extremely strong because of these two new bosses. Because incursion items have some really strong, very likely to be strong bases, like, you know, percentage life chest, uh, cold damage gloves, and a few others, right, that are just really, really good. And... You know, it's not that easy to get Conqueror Exalts. However, these new currencies seem like they're going to be slightly more common. So I do feel it's a pretty good shot to, um, pretty good shot to just influence those and you'll have some really strong gear. So resource reallocation and contested development basically upgrade your temple more. So you'll get more corruption rooms and stuff. Uh, time dilation, I, I'm not a big fan. I wouldn't take that. It's just more blue monsters. Flesh Merchant, it's like a treasure goblin. It'll give you some extra loot. And uh, this is pretty decent because you're going to get more of the rare incursion items. So taking this early, especially if you do end up with a lot of like the um, influence orbs, then yeah, that could be pretty good. So next up we have Torment. And honestly, Torment is really strong. I don't think I'm going to take it on hardcore because obviously Torment can kill you a lot. But we have Seance, which is just, you know, five rare monsters are uh, possessed and their minions are touched. And then there's increased quantity here, which is quite a large amount. Uh, and then ghosts themselves increase quantity too. Here we have more chance for additional spirits. Uh, and here we have 30% more quantity of items dropped. So this is a multiplier for your quant. So for example, let's say that, you know, with, with the ghosts and everything stacked and like everything on, because the ghosts are going to give a lot of quantity. And say you had 440 quantity, it would be a 1.3 multiplier. So it would be the same as getting an additional 130 quant, which, you know, is actually pretty insane. And there's some synergy here. We can move straight into talking about exiles because um, the exiles here, this can spawn uh, up to 20 rogue exiles. And like they have a 100% chance to be possessed by tormented spirit. So... It's pretty good, honestly. Now, this is very scary because you don't really want to fight 20 Ghosted Exiles in Hardcore. You get four at the same time, and they're like Leap Slammers and good initiation ones. That could easily insta-give you. But for Softcore, I'd be pretty tempted to try this out, to be honest. Betrayal also has some nodes. 
There are some decent nodes down here. I don't think I would travel there just to take them though. They are really good. And obviously early on you do want a lot of veiled items. So I can see a lot of people traveling there. And a lot of the things that I want on Souls off on, I don't end up that much on the right side. Maybe I will have to early on to get my focus mod and Gravatius test and stuff. But yeah, there are some really, really nice nodes here. More likely to be accompanied by the leader, more additional veiled items. And then you can get the bargain option more often, which, you know, very often drops you like good currency and stuff like that. And it'll get 200% more items when bargained for. Um, here we have chance to get an additional rank. This is good, especially for farming Katarina or just farming safe houses. This, I would say, is the worst one. Um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. It's not an awful node, but there's just so much really good stuff on the Atlas, to be honest. Expedition, incredibly strong, especially because we're probably going to struggle a bit on getting influence items with the Conquerors being harder to get. Uh, we have things like Buried Knowledge here. We're going to get more logbooks and chance to contain Expedition. Here we have, this one's really good, two additional remnants, which is like the, um, the ones you explode to buff things. And uh, a 30% chance that they'll have an additional suffix modifier. So maybe um, they, that is really good. You'll get more buffs. Uh, here is increased explosions and explosive radius. So honestly, really, really good, especially early. And yeah, like I said, I think influence gear might be harder to get. Depends a little bit uh, and we'll have to play that by ear, but definitely very tempted to take expedition. Next up, we have Abyss and there are some really good nodes, some really bad nodes. 50% uh, increased XP and 100% increased monsters. Now, Votive Horde, probably one of the worst nodes on the tree, in my opinion. This is because this is an actual stat on the gear. It's not like influence where you can keep crafting on it. This takes a suffix, um, or at least it currently does in the game. So it takes a suffix and you can't recraft it. I don't like it. You'd have to drop an actual good item. Areas have a 1% chance to contain an abyss per 2% increased pack size. Obviously that adds up and is pretty decent. This is really good for farming item level 86 gear, really good for SSF. And awakened depths here is that you actually start getting liches very often. Uh, corrupted gaze. I think a large amount of people. This is like very jackpotty. This is very jackpotty because there are some minion jewels and stuff like that, and bow jewels that are going to be very expensive if you get a lot of good shit here. And it's probably going to be pretty likely with, with a five or six that one that you get a decent four stat one. So honestly, pretty good. I think a lot of people are only considering the fact that like, well, it's going to be so rare to get a rare or like a good six stat one. It's like, yeah, but if you get a good four stat one for free, that's that's not bad at all. Next up, we have Harbinger. Obviously, insanely strong, and people really love this shit. Uh, honestly, I'm not a big fan. It can be kind of scary on hardcore whenever like things like Revenants are there. Um, and it depends a little bit how much we need it for the Atlas. So obviously, Harbinger is really good drop rates with div cards, map drops, etc. Uh, here's a 25% chance to be replaced by a powerful Harbinger boss. This is really good whenever you're using Scarabs, you're, you're using the map device slot. Um, here, it's an additional cooldown rate, so they will spawn more monsters, and they'll spawn even more monsters. Um, like, they'll spawn them faster and more. And um, that the currency shards can be currency items instead, so they can actually be orbs. Uh, and here is just guaranteeing an additional Harbinger per map. This could be really nice passively early on, especially on Soul Safan, without investing, just, you know, getting that extra stuff on the map. Delve, uh, this could be really nice if you just want to sort of set it and forget it and you want to delve later and then you'll start with a bunch of ass red and you can only upgrade. Honestly, I feel like these nodes are a bit of a waste though. Uh, but Sulfide Infusion, really, really nice for your... It's on every map now. This is so much nicer than the regional things from last league because now we're just we're just going to have full Sulfide now and again. So honestly, I think these are really nice for those that like delving. We have some other cool nodes as well. Packed with Energy. This is pretty cool for things like, say you're a build that maybe you do struggle a little bit on some bosses, and there are some bosses that are in the actual map that you can put Delve on. So Conquerors, you should be able to do this on, and also Elder Guardians, they're still inside that map. It's not a new map. So you would get three max rests um, and a bunch of damage and a bunch of movement speed. This could be pretty cool for bossing on builds that aren't necessarily that good for bossing. Now, I don't think any of the new bosses are going to have that, at least not these two. Like, they're not going to be just part of a normal map. They're going to have their own, like, separate area. But the sub-bosses, I'm pretty sure they have their own area too. But, like, you know, there's the sub-bosses would be the only ones that maybe they're similar to Elder and Shepherd Guardians. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that they have their own stuff too. 
Uh, and obviously for like Shaper Guardians too, like Minotaur, Elder Guardians, all of those things, they uh, you can get the extra Maxtra. So it could be pretty cool. 5% chance of double Sulfite, and uh, they're guarded by Sulfite hoarding monsters. They'll drop Sulfite when they die. Not that excited about the uh, that last node there. So Legion, really, really strong. And uh, Emblematic is back with the, the travel nodes here. You have a chance, like a 1% chance. So, you know, once every 100 splinters, you'll get an additional Timeless Emblem on average. And it'll really add up. It'll be really nice. I would most likely not have this on permanently or any Legion nodes, to be honest. I would most likely save up a bunch of Scarabs and then target farm Legion and then respec out of it. Obviously, there's, in my opinion, going to be a lot of respecing here because there's so much nice stuff. Uh, Chain of Command as well, I really like. Uh, Protracted Battle is very whatever, but uh, Chain of Command for the additional reward is really nice. And here's just, that could be nice to have on just for additional Legions. Next up, we have Breach, and there is like a new Breach type thing. Um... If anyone has seen Power Rangers, it is uh, basically like that. They are going to just, you know, each become a limb, Chayula in the middle, and it's you are now fighting Zesht, Ula. Uh, I really hope it's just like a massive fucking weird looking fucking Breach Lord that makes me laugh when I see it. Um, but yeah, it is um, Breach has a 2% chance to contain Zesht, Ula, the open hand. Um, and then 20% chance to contain a hand of him. So I don't know if he's actually going to have any unique drops. Because obviously the other Breach Lords can't drop anything really when they are in their own Breach. Only in their own domain. And he doesn't have his own Splinter type, sadly. I think that would be really cool if they did that. And it seems like he will actually drop complete Breach Stones. Maybe he can drop one of each. Maybe he'll just drop one of any. Um, maybe he'll drop multiple. Maybe we'll, we'll see. But either way, pretty cool. I hope it's a fairly hard fight, uh, even though it's just like a small map thing. So very, very interesting there. Other than that, we have chance to spawn breaches. We have chance to contain a boss. I do wonder if that will like increase the chance of Zest. Um, but yeah, trouble breach splinters. Not a huge fan of those, to be honest. Flash breach, very, very nice. It feels really good. It just it's so much faster. You don't waste so much time waiting for the breach to open and close. So I'm a big fan of that. Within their grasp, I don't really like it that much. But if you are spamming a lot of breach, it is obviously worth it. Harvest. Harvest has some really good and some really bad nodes. Now, obviously, this is pretty much the biggest chance. This is 25% more harvest. Um, very, very big. And that's the main one I will take. Other than that, there is uh, crafting options. And here, plus percentage chance to spawn. There's plus percentage chance to spawn here as well. This node, harvest bosses in the area, always drop a sacred blossom. Nobody knows what this is because nobody has actually fought a harvest boss and dropped a sacred blossom. They just don't exist. And there are some rumors of a boss called Ushabi, but this is probably just a tinfoil hat theory. On a serious note, it is so rare to actually get these. And obviously we cannot roll the watchstones anymore for a higher chance to um, get the tier 4 beast. Now, there is a chance that GDD have rebalanced this and remembered, like, oh, yeah, they don't have those watchstones anymore. Now we need to rebalance tier 4 beasts. But I also doubt that they're giving Harmus more love. Let's be honest. It's already very strong. Uh, and the 10% chance to build is garbage. Now, here is um, additional crafting options and 4% chance to spawn harvest. I would probably only go down here if I'm already here. So if I'm already taking betrayal and stuff and I'm there then yeah, it wouldn't be too bad to take because I would take these for 1% because I'm going to be up here anyway. Traveling just for that? Probably wouldn't. And another thing that I almost forgot, Delirium. 100% uh, more likely to spawn bosses, more splinters, and unique cluster jewels. Not a big fan. Um, none of the unique jewels that I really care about, personally. 8% uh, chance to generate 3 additional reward types. This is pretty nice. And uh, it is higher chance here. So yeah, especially if you like Delirium. A lot of people do. Uh, it is kind of better on softcore than hardcore. Obviously, Delirium can be kind of scary. And Pathological just gives you a chance that the maps will drop with Delirium on it. Delirium increases 50% faster, just so like you don't have to wait for it if you're in a very fast build. And here, if you are on a slow build, they'll dissipate slower. Now, obviously, Delirium is pretty nice, so it's definitely a good thing to have. But, I don't know. I don't think I'll be taking it personally. Hardcore still is all fun, and... There's so many good things to take already. Now, there are some other generic nodes that are worth mentioning as well. 
And honestly, there's so much on this tree, and I'm probably going to forget some things that are good. But obviously, like, an additional strong box early on is pretty nice. We also have, uh, like, just anything that's, like, guaranteed things into your map for no investment early on really helps, like, kickstart your early economy. And then, um, obviously, a lot of the mapping ones, like I pointed out, are great. Not a huge fan of this one for the faded uniques and additional uniques. This one is pretty good, mostly because of these. It's three extra rare monsters per map. That will definitely, like, add up. And here, especially the rare jewelry item early on, just getting a bunch of rings and amulets and stuff could be really nice. Gotta remember, amulets can draw plus gem level now by default, so that's really nice. Shrine as well, obviously, really, really nice here with just getting extra shrines for extra monsters. Now, there are really, really cool strongbox mods as well. Here we have the operative strongbox, which is, you know, similar to the like Arcanist or Cartographer, where it's a special strongbox. This one is one that just drops scarabs. So that could be very, very cool. And up here, we have strongbox things that are duplicating currency items. So if it's an Arcanist, or even if it's a normal one that drops currency. Uh, here, duplicate map items. So if you get a Cartographer, very, very cool. And here, duplicated divination cards. Deadly Nightmare, this could be kind of interesting for, you know, unique maps early to try to get item level 86 gear, but it is also very deadly. Now, if we look here, we have a higher chance to spawn Eater of Worlds. Now, it is just 10%, so it's most likely not going to be a huge difference. And uh, Altars, they're like for, you know, I think they were for like buffing the area, if I'm remembering right. There's so much new content, it's insane. Uh, buffing the area and making it harder. And then Eldritch Currency, this would be really, really nice, I'd assume. And you could just probably spec into whatever you're farming at the time and then unspec out of it. Uh, if you are not sure how you respec the Atlas, it is going to be with the um, Orb of Unmaking, which is 10 times more common now, and we can buy it for two regrets of Kirak. So obviously the boss farming nodes are going to be a little bit, we don't fully know. It's going to be a little bit, you know, playing it by ear and seeing and experimenting with it. Um, and then we do have these as well. Um, monster packs uh, have a 10% chance to contain an additional possessing flame wraith, which maybe it's like a special rare, maybe it's similar to like the shaper monster that's special in the shaper maps so that will drop a bunch of extra loot. And uh, eldritch currency items have a chance to be duplicated. Now, that is quite nice, and it's the same here for the bubble boy. Now, this one almost mandatory in the end game, especially for software trade league, because you're most likely going to be juicing your maps with four sextants on every map. And now you get one additional use. This is huge. And another one really here for software players, especially with your juicing your maps, 10% chance not to consume scarabs. And the traveling nodes is um, that you have a chance to drop scarabs. And here is just additional currency items. Now we do have really cool conqueror nodes as well. With And again, granting Cyrus a chance to drop an awakened support gem, a flat 10% chance. Uh, you normally cannot drop them anymore. And an increased chance for conqueror assaulted orbs. I definitely want to play with that. This I am less excited about, um, but the left one, really, really good. Up here, we have some really familiar and really strong nodes with an increased chance of Watcher's Eye and a chance for Shaper and Elder Guardian maps. Here we have a chance for um, or that they are healed and joined by an ally on first reaching 33% life. So that means that when you're fighting the Minotaur, then, you know, Phoenix could appear and they have a chance to drop their fragment. Very, very good for softcore. Kind of scary on hardcore, obviously. Um, down here, we have some Maven nodes. Honestly, in my opinion, this one is not very good. It's just you save one map every 10. Um, this is the new, I think, Orb of Conflict. That was the orb that can make this or this go up a tier or down a tier, like the new Implicits, if I remember correctly. Um, so that could be really good. That's a big chance, 25%. And 25% uh, chance to great awaken support gems from the Maven fights. So definitely very good on the pay for play. Capitivated interest, however, is probably too scary for hardcore. Plus two level might not seem like a lot, but it's probably anything from 10 to 30% more damage on those monsters. And it'll really, really add up. And uh, the splinters, however, is really nice. Last, and I don't think I missed anything terribly important. Either way, it's a fairly long video, and thank you if you are here so far. Um, but we have Synthesis Maps. A, they drop a tier 11 plus, and it's a 1.5% chance higher of it dropping, and then increased pack size inside Synthesis, and they will have increased effect of modifiers. So, you know, that can be scary for the damaged ones. 
Here they will have three additional synthesized implicit modifiers. If you get a ring, etc., they will be way more likely to be a good one. So absolutely good to spec in this before doing maps. Um, and it's not like this will work on like the Kirik missions anyway. Uh, so, you know, saving up a bunch of maps and specking into that's really good. And here, just a chance for it to drop synthesized items, which are really strong. So that was pretty much TLDR of every node in the Atlas and a little bit of when you would use them and and why and how. I do have some trees um, pre-made for those that want to just follow and don't really have a preference on what they run. But again, it is really, there is no best tree. It is just what content do you like doing and want to, like, there's no, don't feel bad like, oh, I'm missing out on all this stuff. Well, we're all missing out on something, right? It's such a good atlas. It's a really good hard choice. And I really like that. It's bad and good at the same time. Really good design by GGD. You really are left feeling like, fuck, I want all of this. And I think the worst thing they ever do in a game is when, well, this is clearly the best choice, right? We've seen some videos now of streamers going like, this is the best atlas tree. None of those are true. It is all about what you enjoy doing. And it is also going to like adapt after the market. If everybody took blight blight stuff is kind of reduced in value and breach maybe will go up so don't be too worried um i think it was octavian that posted a tweet saying that atlas tree that you made it is good because almost every atlas tree is good so loads of good nodes loads of cool quant stuff in the middle great stuff really good job ggg i hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know if this was helpful obviously this is a longer rambling style video but i just wanted to try to explain the atlas uh, and like explore it a little bit with you guys but thanks for watching sub if you like the video good luck in 3.17 more importantly try to die less than i do